Hello, and welcome to Ad Aegis Custom Webcast, sponsored by Scoro. The topic of today's webcast is work smarter, not harder. Drive agency efficiencies in 2023. I'm John Dioso, editor of Ad Age Studio 30, and I'm your moderator today. We have just a few quick items to go over before we begin. We'll hear from today's present presenters, and then we'll open the floor to your questions. To participate in the Q&A portion of the webcast, you'll all you have to do is type your question into the Ask a Question text area and then click the Send button. You may submit your questions at any time during the webcast. And we'll address as many questions as time permits after our presenters prepare remarks. Now let's get started. Now I'm very pleased to introduce our presenters for today. First up, Samantha Stormo, Head of Production at Encompass. Kevin O'Connor, Head of Sales at the, of the Americas at Scoro, And Patrick Hong, Head of uh, Solution Engineering at Scoro. Thank you everybody for being here. Kevin, are you there? I am, John, thank you. Thank you very oh, much. It's all yours, take it away. <laughs> thank you very much, John. Uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, we appreciate your, your participation today your comments, and we look forward to sharing some insights that we've found in the market. Uh, we'll talk to a, uh, a peer of yours, a colleague of yours who's, who's in the trenches with you, uh, fighting the same fights you are um, and overcoming the same challenges you are. And, and we'll hear from Samantha Stormo on how she's overcome those. I guess as we start, the agenda for today uh, we'll start with productivity in 2023. Why are we talking about it? Uh, what challenges have we heard around the marketplace across the country and across North America that you and your peers are up against? Um, we'll move into the Scoro perspective. Uh, we'll share some of our insight. We'll introduce you to Scoro for those of you who are unfamiliar and some of the unique things that we're doing. We'll also touch on uh, some of the work that we're doing to drive efficiency and productivity around the four-day work week. Then we'll get into the heart of it and actually talk to Samantha and get her perspective and her agency's perspective on the journey that she's gone through, some of the challenges that her and her agency has faced and what they've done to overcome those. We'll then take a look at different ways to measure productivity as we turn it over to Patrick Hong to look at some creative and um, insightful ways uh, on different ways to measure productivity and efficiency in your business. And then we'll open it up for Q&A as we wrap the call. So with that, let's start with productivity uh, and product profitability. Why are we here? Um, and really, how can agencies, you, ensure that your business is fit for purpose in 2023? How can you ensure that you're set up to win as we go into what is essentially going to be one of the most challenging uh, fiscal years um, in the last over a decade, right? And, and why is that? Well, the reality is there's a number of headwinds that we haven't necessarily faced in, in quite some time. Obviously, it starts on the global stage. Uh, we have things like war and, and economic challenges that we're, we're dealing and reeling from. The local daunting macro and socioeconomical climate here in the U.S. and in North America. Obviously, with potential recession comes constricting budgets. Um, obviously, there's, there's always um, a fight for new prospects and, and earning business, but with constricting budgets, that can be even more profoundly challenging. And then obviously, recruitment and retention uh, is at the forefront of almost every industry and the agency world is no different. So with all of these headwinds, all of these challenges on a larger scale, what challenges at the local level do we need and do you need to address this year? So I thought it'd be great, John, if we could start with a poll. Let's take the temperature of the audience and those that are here. So which of these represents your most significant opportunity to improve your productivity and efficiency in 2023? We're going to give you some time uh, while we continue to navigate through the presentation. Um, and really, we're talking about tool consolidation, resource scheduling and coordination, process automation, data quality, getting the right data in a timely manner, effective time tracking, and process standardization. 
So curious to hear from you as to what your big focus is in 2023 and what you think the lever is that you need to pull in order to drive your productivity and efficiency and create the most gains and most wins for you as we move into the new year. Now at Scoro, we're talking about these because the operational efficiency challenges we hear about day in and day out from our clients revolve around these six items. We've polled over the last year hundreds, if not thousands of clients, and ask them to kind of weigh in on what they think these challenges seem to be. And obviously it centers around these six topics. Consistently, uh, I was in a round table just a few weeks ago with some executives, understanding project profitability in real time, having those insights was at the top of the list. And then everything else kind of falls into that, being able to plan and understand resource allocation and utilization. Right, being able to track time effectively at the macro and micro levels within a project or within a task. Right, these are things that consistently across the board we are hearing. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar, these are challenges that we address here at Scoro. Scoro was founded almost a decade ago with the idea that, not the revolutionary idea, but the time is money. How can we help agencies like you achieve more with less, in less time, right? How can we do a better job of creating transparency in areas of your business that maybe don't exist today? How can we help you improve utilization amongst your people and your teams and your projects and your work? These are the areas that Scoro focuses on. Um, so at the core, we take all of this information and we use our tool in the Scoro platform to help you understand what's happening in real time within your projects and understand the project profitability before a project is completed so that you can make adaptions, uh, make changes and adopt in real time and pivot where you need to pivot. We help you understand individual capacity allocate resources based on actual availability, not just what we might think we need to do. We help you track time, prioritize work, um, monitor and understand billable and non-billable hours, um, and really track progress in real time through tools like Gantt charts and things of that nature to help you be more efficient and drive profitability throughout your business. Right. And so we've taken all of our learnings over the last several years, all the data that we've acquired. We actually use our own tools at Scoro to manage our work and our projects. And we've been able to take that work and really push the boundaries of profitability and efficiency. We've even started to pioneer the concept and the real application of the four day work week. So all of these things go into pro profitability in the business. The four day work week, a lot of you are questioning, so why did we do this? How did it work? What were the results? We're not, we're not sitting here saying that everybody should move to a four day work week, but obviously as pioneers and experts in efficiency and productivity, uh, we felt that we had the right, right data and the right tools to make this a reality in our business, right? And so we believe that the four day work week is, is the better and the smarter way to work. But most importantly, um, we've identified the metrics that we need to look at in order to understand if we can be successful in these areas. And so we have moved to that four day work week, still serving businesses and partners of ours five days a week and rotating those. Certainly happy to share more information around the four day work week. Um, with you later today, as well as questions if you have them into the future uh, as we make it a reality. But John, let me let me turn it back over to you I, uh, in case we have any questions from the audience. Uh, pause here and before we transition over to Sam and, and learn what challenges someone in the marketplace has today and how they're impacting them. Absolutely. And, you know, I actually want to kind of dive into the poll. We're getting some great results in here. And before we take a look at that, I just want personally, I wanted to ask you, you know, I've been fascinated by the whole concept of the four day week work week. I, I think we all know if you've ever worked anywhere for any amount of time, 
you've had that, you know, we just came out of Thanksgiving or you come out of a three day work weekend due to a holiday like Memorial Day or something. And you always notice anecdotally, wow, we were really productive in those four days, right? How did that happen? So I'm sure that that's a lot of the basis of a lot of the, the research, actually real deep data that you guys have dived into. And then recently there was also a report that came out in CNN that I saw this morning about big studies being done around the world about the success a four day. A lot of people have been, a lot of businesses have been implementing it as a pilot program in their own offices. Um, obviously, like you said before, you're not recommending that everybody go to go to the four day work week, but kind of implementing some of the efficiencies or some of the approaches that are that are uh, that that people use to make that work when they have to do the four day work because of the holidays, for example. Like I said before, so t- tell me what has been the reaction of clients anybody else in the industry to this whole concept? And do they kind of understand where you're coming from when you're saying, yes, the four day work week, put it in quotes, right? We're, we're, this is a great model to use for a business, but we're not saying literally do that. It, they may, that may not be the right model literally for every business to take, but if you take the lessons away from it, you know, so what has been the reaction of people so far that, that you've seen in the industry? Yeah, the reaction, uh- First and foremost, what, what I found is one of curiosity. Well, let me say, first of all, before I interrupt you, Kevin, when you said you don't, you didn't mean literally that everybody should go to four-day work week, I was very depressed. So I said, yeah, I think we should go to the four-day work week. Right, well, go ahead. I'm sure every employee feels like we should be on a, a four-day work week. Um, it has to be right for your business. For us, it makes obviously a lot of sense, but it, I, I would caveat a couple things. The, the answer to your immediate question is, you know, the, um, Clients are immediately curious, right? Um, more than anything around some of those questions, how, why is it working, right? And um, we've, we aren't piloting a four day work week. We're not, there's, there's some different models here, right? That, that you can do from, it's not consolidating five, eight hour days into four tens. It's, it's actually doing the work of 40 hours and 32, right? Trying to keep the same efficiency in less time. That's that's the, the measure of improved productivity and true efficiency, right? So I have to caveat that because there are several models of the four-day work week. There is, right, just condensing the hours in fewer days, and then there is actually doing um, the same amount of work in less time. And there's also the, the reduced salary model where we, we simply cut the day and cut the salary and cut the expectations. We've actually moved to a true four-day work week. And I would say it didn't come and happen overnight. Right. There was a, several months of research and study. It wasn't anecdotal. But what we did found was some some profound insights, both internally and externally around what happens on that Friday, for example, and the productivity rates and how significantly they drop. Um, and to your point, when we are in a condensed week already because of holidays, how productivity improves. It wasn't an, it, it did not come uh, without a significant amount of work on the front end. Um, but but overall, I would say internally, certainly a big win, um, positivity, employee morale, recruitment, all big wins um, immediately uh, for our move there. Um, and I would encourage the the folks in, in attendance in the audience to follow us along. You can you can go to scoro.com and actually follow our journey. Um, learn from from what we're doing, what worked, what didn't work, right? What we're learning in real time as we move and uh, maybe take some of that data back to your own business and see how you can apply it. Great. And why don't we take a look at the polls? Can we uh, send those results to the audience so they can see them? And then we can kind of dive in and maybe, uh, Kevin, you can take a look and also give me your take on what you think about this. So let's see. Looks like process automation came in first with 30, um, about 31%. Then we have process standardization at about 28. Uh, resource scheduling coordination around 19. Um, effective time tracking at 11 uh, tool consolidation at eight and data quality at about three. So what do you, what, what do you take away from that, Kevin? I, I think it fits, it fits really kind of timely and I'll, I'll back the slide up one with some of the, some of the data that we found. Um, they're all big, big priorities, right? I don't think everyone may be focused more on one than another, but what I found is that they're all relatively important to different organizations, but I think it fits and aligns rather well with what we're seeing with with the thousands that we've polled um, customer wise and, and and what they're looking to do, and specifically to the impact that Scoro has been able to have 
for those folks across those challenges. These are all significant challenges. They're all important. Proud to say, and, and you can see some of the results on your study here, right? Significant improvements in each one of these areas um, for folks that, that have adopted SCORA, which is exciting. That's awesome. Well, why, don't we bring, why don't we get another perspective in here? Why don't we bring on Samantha Stormo, who's the head of production at Encompass. Uh, Sam, do you have any perspective on the results that we have or anything else that Kevin has brought up in his part of the presentation? So I would say that for us, I mean, we've been looking into all of those different uh, different goals, but for us going into 2023, that effective time tracking is is actually our a number one. We've been we've been in the system now for for a year, um, just just under a year. We started on January 3rd, uh, and we have seen a, a lift in our effectiveness, a lift in our efficiencies. Um, in in line with everything he's showing here on slide nine mm -hmm. for sure but then that again that it's interesting to see not everybody prioritizing time tracking because that is our our a number one uh what we're what we're pushing for next year and and what is the rationale behind that is just to make sure that everybody's working as efficiently as possible it's especially not. Not mm -hmm. Kevin before, but just generally the changes, the huge changes that we've all been dealing with. Obviously, I'm doing the webcast here from my home office, you know, work most the majority of the past couple of years out of here instead of our actual headquarters in New York City. Um, so is that one of the reasons why? Because it's just it's kind of a way to make sure that we're as efficient working as efficiently as possible. It's actually not. For us, it's really interesting. Uh, we know that we give uh, all of ourselves to our clients on an individual level and on a team level. And so we want to make sure that that as a business, we are, you know, of course, you know, we will continue to give away a lot of our time, but we want to be able to bill for a significant amount of our time, of course, as well, to make sure that we're a healthy agency. And so uh, that's that's why we're focused on it, is to make sure we're not giving away too much, which we su suspect right now that we probably are. Great. Well, why don't we have a bunch of questions coming in, but before we get to those, why don't we throw it to your part of the presentation and we'll get to the audience questions in a little bit. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So thank you. Thank you, John. And thank you, Kevin. Uh, thanks to, to the whole Squirrel and the whole AdAge teams for, for having me here today. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, so I'm Samantha. I'm a senior leader here at Encompass. Uh, forgive any background noise. Uh, we are now based uh, down at the Hawthorne Airport in Los Angeles. Uh, and so I'm actually looking out over an active runway right now. It's hopefully <laughs> fairly, fairly quiet for the next little bit. Uh, but we are a small privately held and women owned experiential marketing agency based, based again here in LA. And our job is to connect, to connect people. Uh, our clients are Fortune 200 companies, and they include some of the biggest names in entertainment and CPG in the world. Uh, we we, wa we work uh, truly across the globe, and we move at the speed of light. And of course, like, like many of you folks uh, tuning in, our work came to a screeching halt in March of 2020. And after, after the initial shock of, of that shutdown, we jumped into the opportunity to to refocus inwards, to to reevaluate and really reset our our values, our goals, our internal and external dialogue, and reimagine how we wanted to show up for for our clients, for ourselves, uh, and for our people going forward. So part of that assessment naturally meant we needed to take a, a really hard look at our internal operations and understand how effectively uh, do we actually work and how can we make that better. Pre-pandemic, uh, again, I'm, I'm sure very similar to, to many shops out there, uh, we rarely made the space to prioritize these big changes to, to our own inner workings. We didn't want to jeopardize the work that we do for our clients or slow down our team. We needed to keep that pace. So, so now in the beginning of the pandemic, with, without the risk of affecting those active projects holding us back, uh, we, we jumped in and truly started to redesign the way that we work. Uh, at the same time, we we saw a need to recreate a collaboration space uh, where anybody, internal or external to the company, could plug into the details uh, and, and the progress of a project, get the information they need, get up to speed really quickly, and start contributing uh, very effectively. We're again, we're used to a distributed team working around the globe, uh, but. 
previously, we've been able to connect in person, at least for a portion of the planning process. And that, that special human connection, that engagement really helped us to do great work together. So uh, all of that in mind, we kicked off the hunt for a platform that could offer us visibility and connection and an opportunity to, to either eliminate or automate as much of our process as possible. So our goals, we, after evaluating a couple dozen systems, uh, including one that we'd actually looked at at least eight times in the previous five years, we, we got really clear on what we were looking for. So first, we, we needed a tool that would let us collaborate on quality budgets. Uh, in the first year of the pandemic, especially, uh, as much up for our clients, they needed to concept and spend really very quickly, or they risk losing those budgets. Uh, you know, there was so much ambiguity in the market. We needed to be able to keep that pace, but always maintain the the consistency and the accuracy that our work was was built on. Uh, two, uh, we we needed to create visibility uh, and land a tool that would connect our project financials to our company financials and uh, give us a really good bird's eye view uh, for cash planning. Uh, while we, at the same time, we wanted to make sure that we found something that that let our finance team, our accounting team, stay where they're most comfortable, which was in QuickBooks. Three, we were targeting uh, efficiencies again, and we needed that tool to help us eliminate or automate as many steps in our fairly cumbersome, fairly manual processes as possible. Four, we uh, we needed a collaboration tool to let our teams connect and to do to do their best work, regardless of where in the world they were, and one that would help us keep work going if an individual needed to bow out and just and take a minute for them for themselves. Of course, the work itself doesn't doesn't stop just because our humans need a break. Uh, and then five, uh, we needed a tool that would that would grow with us, that would help us continue. Uh, in our learning journey uh, and, and that journey of continuous improvement to, to grow and to evolve our business, especially again, in this, in this rapidly changing world uh, that we live in now. So eventually we found Squirrel and, and we made the commitment. But at this point, we're, we're talking massive changes for the agency. Uh, our departments were very happy, uh, very, very happy being siloed. Uh, they were rooted in years of process that worked for them, uh, that, was, that was their done natural day-to-day -day workflow. And so here we are rethinking everything. We were, we were aiming to connect these little bits of data uh, into a fully integrated ecosystem where you know, one change we make in one team really uh, has a direct impact uh, on the work that another team is doing, which is wonderful, um, but, but incredibly labor intensive to go through that journey. Um, and our goal was to be able to, to get to a place of working from the same truths and ideally uh, spending less time on redundant work and low value uh, work and again, be able to refocus on, on what we do as a, as a creative shop. So this process was not popular and it was certainly not easy. Uh, it was a, a pretty, pretty significant lift. But, but through the process, we really, we uncovered an incredible amount of uh, opportunity within our workflow uh, it, to grow and to really very positively impact the business on a, on a significant level. And then the results. Uh, so first I'd say there were, there were a couple major things that we learned through the implementation process. Uh, one, no system is perfect. Uh, change is hard uh, and you can't make everyone happy. But uh, we have never ever had the data, the insights uh, that we have in hand today. Almost a full year uh, operating in the system. So we rolled out on January 3rd, and now we're focused on making truly data-driven data decisions that we expect will set us up for our best year ever in, in 2023. Uh, I'd say there are a couple of areas that, that we've seen really a great impact. Um, one is in collaboration. Again, we have unprecedented, unprecedented visibility and access across the agency. 
our executive and our accounting dashboards put the most important information front and center. So we spend less time reporting and more time in, in work that really truly matters. Uh, and then our, our accounting team uh, alongside of our leadership team is able to make more effective, uh, quick decisions when they really matter. Uh, and in terms of our team, our team is able to hand off quotes, uh, client invoicing, project uh, planning and spending almost seamlessly so they can take a break as needed, refuel themselves. Uh, but again, uh, the work doesn't have to stop. Uh, another great area of impact is efficiency. And so we've, we've deprecated four entire tools so far uh, by shifting into Scoro, and we've either eliminated or automated 22 steps in our workflow. And that's, we still have a couple of features to set up uh, uh, to go live in 2023. So that's only the beginning for us. And it's, it's a massive gain uh, in effectiveness and in efficiency. And then three, uh, so the third area is really in our delivery. Today, we can near instantly produce a quote that we can stand behind for our clients with the data that's built on the data uh, of how their last project performed in hand. So that minimizes client wait time. It minimizes revision time all, all around. It lets us be able to open up and actually activate against those budgets much more quickly and effectively. Um, and then, of course, it also protects the agency. So we're always uh, gathering, reviewing, analyzing, and then ac actioning the data that we have uh, in our quotes uh, within this tool. Uh, and then we're also really thrilled, and this was a, a concern going into uh, a tool, a system like Scoro, was that we wouldn't be able to maintain the, the flexibility and how we show our clients the information that they need to see. Uh, and we're thrilled that we've been able to, to really maintain these highly customized sales docs for our clients without sacrificing the info we need on the back end to really make smart decisions uh, and, and keep evolving. And then the future. So we don't plan to slow down in 2023. And there are certainly a couple of key areas that we want to grow uh, with Scoro uh, just at the start of the new year. So one, we are, we're slated to start the new year with a full bill sync in place. So for, for anyone that's not familiar with the tool, this is the accounts payable part uh, of, of, the, of the platform that connects from our project team uh, back, to, back to QuickBooks and back to our accounting team. So we'll, we'll kick that off full with the full bill sync, uh, inc including laying the groundwork for the integration of an external AB system later in the year. So combined, we expect that that, that change is going to save uh, our project teams and our accounting team a combined five minutes of supplier invoicing time um, per invoice. So for us, you know, on a, on a couple million dollar job, that's a massive, um, that's a massive amount of invoice processing uh, and then which translates into a tremendous amount of time. Um, and we're happy to give away that data entry part uh, again so we can focus on something else. Uh, two, uh, we're we're starting to explore how to integrate the the customer portal, so at least our external partners and ideally some of our key clients can start joining us in in the planning within Scoro, um, which that's a, a really exciting feature that we haven't gotten to play with just yet. And then three is is a personal goal, uh, and I smile. This this four day week work week has my heart. Uh, yes. So uh, <laughs> I'm continuing to focus on how to help our people thrive without being always on, and and with the goal of really embracing the idea of of strategic inaction and how that can be a driver for for even more creative work and a a stronger you know human life balance uh, or or life integration. Um, but and then with tools like Scoro, we are we really do think that 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 reality could could be a little bit more plausible. We're we're really we're really excited about about the possibilities coming out of uh, working in such an integrated platform and what that could mean for us going forward. Well, that's great, Sam. Um, a question about the you mentioned the customer portal. So your customers and clients don't need to be 
uh, customers of Squirro and are able to take advantage of this, right? So if they are your clients, they have full access to the portal, they could communicate with you, have access to whatever data or any type of insights that you want to share with them. Is that how that works? That's that's my understanding, and I'm happy to, Kevin, if you want to jump in here with me. So, so what we're excited about uh, is is that idea, right? Like, so we have many many clients and many key partners that will work along the planning process, and to my understanding, we'll be able to give them access to things like the Gantt chart, um, uh, things that show our progress uh, to the path of completion, to the path of delivery, um, without uh, providing all of the back end of the information that our team may have access to. So uh, it would be a limited view um, that we get to, to curate for them. Yeah, that's exactly right, Sam. You you will get to control kind of what you share, but it is, is to your point earlier, it's a collaboration tool, right? So the, uh, the idea there is that you can heighten the level of customer service that you're providing uh, by offering that collaboration to, to help them understand where you are in your journey with their projects. Um, and they can also communicate back and forth with you and ask questions. Hey, why are we at this point, not along here? And, and yes, you control the narrative of, of what they get to see and what they get to access, but that's correct. And that's awesome because, you know, there, we have, we have a tremendous number of really incredibly savvy clients that, that want to be on the journey with us. And, and that partnership is, is actually one of the things that we believe makes our, our agency special is that we are truly partners. Uh, and so to be able to leverage a, a tool that can help us, you know, really, really bring uh, uh, folks together across the client agency line is, is massive, is exciting. You know, and the other thing that kind of stuck out to me in your presentation, one of the slides where you mentioned that you got, you were able to replace or get rid of 22 different steps. I mean, we've all been, we all know what it's like to work on multiple projects. And if you can get rid of steps, I mean, those steps are there, we're there for a reason, obviously, hopefully to be more productive and be more efficient. But the fact you're able to get rid of them because you were using some type of platform like, like Squirro. Uh, that's significant. And I think like for like even looking a little bit deeper for the benefit of our audience, can you give us like one example of how that really impacted the work? So, you know, you don't need to name a client or anything, but is there anything that you can kind of point to where like a mini case study where, okay, this is what ended up happening because we were able to, you know, fine tune our operations so much? Well, sure. So uh, I give you a really general example, but to me, it's one of the most dramatic ones you know our, our accounting team uh, our accounting team always processed uh, our payment requests um, via paper so they literally as we sat in the building together and that was before we moved here down to Hawthorne we, we you know, have a much smaller collaboration space now than before and we were in West Hollywood and our, our accounting team you would actually fill out a, a PDF uh, uh, that you wanted to get a, a vendor paid and you would print that PDF uh, and you would bring it to our accounting team and you would put it in their inbox, uh, literally outside of their door, physically drop it off. Still in the beginning of 2020. And that was, it was a, it was an incredible uh, amount of work and it was, you know, it's great exercise. I miss walking around the office for sure. I miss uh, actually being able to interact with our incredible accounting team, awesome humans. But, but that step alone, you know, we're marketers. And so, uh, Letting letting our people focus on on the actual client service, the actual marketing that we do, and the actual producing uh, of our programs, of our campaigns for clients, versus you know filling out uh, a PDF every time that we need to process uh, a payment to a partner, to a vendor, to an external resource, that is a that was a huge shift, um, massive massive win to keep keep folks really focused where where they should be amazing I, I thought, at least you didn't mention fax machines so you know, that. <laughs> no <laughs> fair right, not, not still in 2020 <laughs> <laughs> all right so the questions continue to come in and i promise you we'll get to them but i'd love to let's why don't we bring uh i want to bring patrick on throw it to him for his presentation then we'll get to the questions at the end patrick you there i'm here thanks so much Sean. all right take it away all right, so we've talked a lot about the real life experience of agencies and how Sam can actually uh, made those transformations using Scora. But what does that actually mean in practice? And how can we help with your visibility uh, into profitability? So Scora here on our homepage allows you to uh, 
a show the information that's most relevant for you to understand your agency's profitability. Here we can um, highlight things like uh, the incomes and the product, uh, profit, profits for each of your projects throughout the year, break it down by even clients, what you're working on, and also just get a snapshot into all your existing projects and what the profit actually looks like today. And it, even um, at the bottom there, you can actually just see how the financial statuses of all the, uh, all the projects that are ongoing and ultimately make decisions all on a single screen here. So if you think about it this way, this is essentially is your command center and how you can uh, understand profitability all on a single screen and then click into it and drill down further um, and get a better understanding of where you can make those data-driven decisions. So let's drill down into what, a, what further information we can get into a project view. So when we click into the project view itself, here we can actually see the Gantt chart fully built out and ready, um, already in mid-flight. And in that quoted versus actual table, here we can actually start to see the information of where we're potentially over-serving our customers or potentially um, running so efficiently that we're um, increasing our profit margin here. So let's use research as an example there. Here in that quotes versus actual, we want to ensure that we're staying as accurately to our quote as possible. But as you can see, that top number shows the actuals versus what was quoted to our client. As you can see in that research phase, we do have a lot of red that are showing up here. So this is an ex example of how we may be over-serving those customers and chewing into that profit margin. With the visibility of Scoro and how we can ultimately get a better understanding of where we're spending time in our projects, this allows us to make those decisions and um, figure out where we're potentially over-serving our clients and ultimately how it's affecting our profit mar margin or our bottom line. So if we wanna drill down um, into like how we should potentially uh, understand where we're leaving money on the table, we can also then take a look at our utilization report. So this allows us to get a full understanding of where we're potentially overworked or underworked across the entire team. So with a heat map, we can see that, you know, the week, 47th week, um, I've put in a little bit of extra time, but, um, you know, we've had, we've had to make up for some of the, the deficits and potentially uh, over-serving some of our clients. But now we know that moving forward, and we can see that the workload may not be balanced. Uh, we can see that um, the other members of the team may have availability available, and ultimately that non-billable time is affecting our bottom line and ultimately impacting our profitability here. So with the utilization report in Scora, we can see where we're potentially overworked and underworked, spread out the wor uh, workload, and ultimately come up with the most efficient way to service our clients. And finally, the WIP report, or for those of you who aren't, aren't familiar with that acronym, it is the work in progress report. This allows us to get a full snapshot of the financial health of all of our ongoing projects. So if we need to actually get a better understanding of where profitability is being impacted, here we can actually see the income that's come up to date versus what was actually budgeted, what the costs actually look like, how much of the project is left, and ultimately help us get a better understanding of profitability and the full visibility into our, how our agency can run more effectively. All right, John. So that's all I had to show today um, in terms of how Scoro's platform can help with profitability. Um, and you know, this is um, ultimately how we can give you that full visibility into making those data-driven uh, decisions to run an effective agency. Thanks, Patrick. And just one quick question. So obviously, uh, people looking at that see, okay, this is Scoro's, you know, uh, Scoro's dashboard here. Um, when when clients come to you and they want to, how do you, is it just meeting after meeting where you kind of uh, are embedded in their team to figure out, hey, what are your needs so you can fully customize the platform for their business? How does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's, we do have the flexibility to help with that. Um, and every single client has different needs, different wants as all and um, whatnot. We have the flexibility to help work the way that you need to work in order to get your work done and ultimately be as efficient as possible in many different uh, measurable ways. So again, without being too specific, uh, we have that ability to actually uh, make it flexible for all of our different cl uh, clients.
But then ultimately, once you get that information and you've had those conversations, it really is up to the platform. And I, I assume it's AI and ML uh, that, that's doing the heavy lifting there. Once you get all the actual data points that you need to kind of figure out a plan. Yeah, no, absolutely. So again, uh, tools is only as good as the end users. So things like, you know, logging your time, making sure that information is up to date and inputting that information will then uh, be able to have that um, understanding into profitability and ultimately get a better like visualization and uh, proof and kind of in the putting in the work that you're doing. Great, thanks. Hey, why don't we bring Kevin back? Kevin, uh, do you want to go to questions now or were there anything else that you wanted to share with the audience before we got to the Q&A portion? Uh, no, why don't we go into the Q&A um, and then we can come back to wrap it up with some final thoughts. How does that sound, John? Sounds great. All right, let's just go. Okay, so I'm just going to read out the questions and uh, you guys can decide amongst yourselves um, you know, uh, who's going to answer them. And let me just remind everybody that if you want to ask any more questions, if we still have some time here, uh, just type your question to the ask a question text area, then click to hit the send, uh, to send, the send button. Okay, so first question, time tracking is huge and time is money, well said, but sometimes big clients dominate the agency time. Now that never happens. Sometimes the agencies overserve those without regard of profitability. How can agencies track time versus money and not fall prey to over-serving big clients at the detriment of other clients. Who wants to take that one on? Um, I can take on that. So it's part of the, one of the things that I chatted about was all about measuring and getting a better understanding of your data points. So the biggest, the most important thing here is to understand where you're spending that time and over-serving. And then you've got a full understanding of what you can potentially do from there. It may be um, charging more, understanding where to potentially resourcing or not falling out of uh, scope on those said projects. So the most important thing is uh, you can measure and then start to get a better understanding of where that over-serving may ha be happening and ultimately make a decision to action on it there. And I think the feedback that I hear a lot, John, is that a lot of agencies, they know they're doing this. They just don't have the data to understand the degree or magnitude with which it's happening. That's what Scoro will provide is the insights into the degree and magnitude of where you are over or under serving. And then it's up to the Samanthas of the world to determine what they want to do with that information, right? And whether it's charge more, do it because you need to do it. But we we'll, we give you the insight to make that business decision, right? Well, at least it's based on data and actual numbers and real-time data and not you're bothering us and <laughs> exactly. so you're not going to give them a call and say, Hey, lay off, you know, they have other clients. <laughs> That's not how it works. Okay. You are a full service agency, but you won't do that. Okay. Good to know. It's also <laughs> helpful too, I think for the Samanthas of the world, right. To be able to have the data. And then that is, that is ammunition that they can go have an educated conversation with that client on okay. to explain why they need to charge a little bit more. Right. So um, I, I think that's another big, big piece of value. Awesome. All right. Here's another great question came in. Uh, how of my favorite subject, the four day work week, how have clients adjusted to the four day work week and how did you condition them to not all also not always be always on? Well, I, think that, I can, I can feel this and Sam, you can, you can back me up. I think first and foremost, from a Scoro perspective, clients really should see zero disruption in the way that we partner and support them. Right. So while we have moved to this four day work week internally, um, we are still serving the needs of our clients on normal business hours through things like rotating shifts and, and, and whatnot. So that SCORO employees still can recognize that doesn't mean that the, the Friday is always the day off. Right. Maybe it's Monday. But I think the key here is there's been zero disruption to client satisfaction and relationships. Samantha, would would you agree with that? I totally agree. And I, I think it's actually, it's very interesting. You know, this was even before you shifted to the four day work week, you know, we, we had a moment uh, in the beginning when we committed uh, that we were concerned about the majority of your team at that point in time was in the EU. Uh, and so with the time difference of the West coast, um, I think that from that point uh, forward into you shifting down to the four day work week, we've been cared for really well. You know, we, we've, I, I actually don't feel the impact of just during business hours because our business hours are 
different and complementary. And uh, I am very active uh, with the the Squirrel Help team, uh, and they're always present uh, when I when I need them very actively, uh, or or when I need them, you know, to understand something bigger or make a feature request. Um, so we we certainly have not felt uh, uh, neglected in the shift. That's great to hear. I would just add one other thing to, to Sam's point. I think this past year has been really exciting on the Squirrel side uh, from a lot of product related items, but also from a from a personnel standpoint, we now have full customer uh, client uh, support services all across the U.S. So from client services, customer support, sales, onboarding, we now have those resources here in the States as well to ensure Samantha and her peers are cared for just as they would any other client across the globe. Mm-hmm. And now and almost the, 24 well, hours a day, I will say. <laughs> I was just going to say, Patrick, was your work, was your time management so much in the red because of your four-day four day work week? Or is, <laughs> are you just burning the midnight oil as usual? Is that how that works? No, ultimately, like, it's all about being efficient, right? And we've stood on some pillars like reducing meeting times, being prepared, asynchronous meetings, those sorts of things that make a huge difference for the way that we operate. Uh, ultimately, there's, uh, it's not necessarily like there's little idle time and whatnot, but ultimately, every meeting and every single uh, sort of uh, interaction has a purpose and ultimately helps us focus on our goal in hand and helps us grow our company. You know, and while we're still on the subject, there was another question that came in while we we're talking about the four-day work week. And let me just ask that one. How has the four-day work week impacted your company's culture and employee mental health, which is such a big topic? And do you think that that directly tries into improve productivity? Maybe, Sam, you can take that one first. Well, I don't know if Sam I mean, has gone to the four-day work week. Oh, no, 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 I don't no. think they have. So, no, you're right. Uh, Sam, if you have, I'm just sorry, like, like, did I just wake up in a four-day work week? I am so in. <laughs> that, I'll, I'll take that, and I think it's it's a good clarification question for the audience, John. We're, like I said, we are we are big proponents of the four-day work week and and how we work and how we do business. It makes a lot of sense for us, and we have the tool now with Scoro to be able to give us the foundational supports to be successful in that, to measure productivity, to know that we're still successful and and achieving those productivity and efficiency metrics. Um, I think to the direct question, it's exactly what you might assume it would be. There's, there's, it's helped from a employee morale standpoint. It's helped us from a recruitment and retention standpoint. Um, and, and obviously the, the uptick of all of that is, is not just, mental health, but it has driven the the efficiency uh, within the business as well. And there are a couple of questions here that I think would be good for Sam, actually. So uh, one directed, I think they're both directed toward you. Um, answer them both. So what kind of steps have you automated through using Squirrel? And also with focus on greater gain and efficiency, how does this impact on staff work enjoyment and retainment? And of course, uh, greater productivity. Sure, sure. So uh, I'll give a, another example. I mean, pre, pre, pre-pandemic, well, pre-score rollout, because it took us a little bit to design and implement the system uh, within our team. But before that, all, all of our account leads were, were very manually reporting into our company pipeline um, from, from our new business team for, through our, our account leads on active uh, projects um, every single week. And so if an account lead has, has multiple projects uh, happening at the same time, that lift into a pipeline is very cumbersome. And then from the point of uh, reporting into the pipeline, you know, how are you doing today in terms of progress, in terms of profitability, you know, uh, how are you doing against your production budget, all of, all of those things coming into the pipeline in a manual basis into Excel um, week after week after week, uh, every week, by the end of the week, by the end of the day on Friday, and then come Monday, another individual, I don't know if you can hear that plane taking off right now, uh, another individual would take that information from from the pipeline uh, and, and start to think about, okay, you know, now, you know, what does this look like if, if the uh, opportunities that are sitting in, in opportunity or that are actively sitting in pitch, what if those hit, you know, what is the impact to that on our business? Then that individual could filter that information back down to department heads uh, to, to be able to have an informed look at resourcing. From there, we would also filter uh, into um, 
our cash flow or cash planning document with our accounting team, you know, what massive payments, you know, not, not the little ones, uh, but what big payments do we have coming in, going out uh, this week uh, and, and going forward through the month. And so all of those steps, all of those really, you know, hands-on, very manual steps were automated in Squirrel. So now as, you know, there's a, a Kanban our pipeline is is automated in the system. So for us, if when we write a quote um, and uh, a client buys that quote, um, they say, yes, we, we want to do this thing with you. You are our partner. Um, we, instead of going to report in this Excel document, which then filters and filters and filters and filters through many hands, we literally drag the opportunity to the next stage in the pipeline. And then it updates uh, all of the information that we use to run our business up and down. Um, um, daily. And so that that's, uh, I think for me, just the management of work through the pipeline is, is the a number one biggest uh, gain and efficiency that we have across the company. And uh, Kevin, I think that uh, this is a good follow-up question. So we're talking a lot about Squirrel and talking a lot about automation and how the efficiencies that, that brings and all the benefits of that. So what is the question is, what is the response to clients who believe that there's no replacement for that one-to-one -one human interaction when it comes to efficiency and white glove, what they're calling white glove service? Well, I would agree. Um, th there's, there's no replacement for personal interaction, right, and white glove service. That's it's not what we're suggesting. I, I think there is foundational supports you can provide to that so that the service and the white glove serve so that the, the service and the white glove treatment you're providing can be grounded better in data and the service actually goes up. So there's only so much we, we talked about a good example of this was over serving or under serving clients or quoted versus actuals, right? It's someone that's, you know, you're spending too much time with. Well, it's one thing to know that anecdotally and to try and have a conversation with a customer. That's that direct one-to-one -one personal white glove conversation you're having. It's another to support that direct personal interaction and that one-to-one -one white glove service with data that is now provided. And it makes the conversation more productive. And it actually, I would say, moves the bar of what we think white glove service is to a whole nother level. So I would say there is no replacement for it, but there's a lot of things that you can do through systems and tools like Scoro to provide you support to increase the bar when it comes to delivering what we think white glove service is. All right, great. I think that, um, yeah, I think that was the time to uh, go to that last bit of the presentation, Kevin. Do you want to wrap it up and then we'll take yeah. it home? Yeah, I'm happy to. I, I, I appreciate everybody taking the time today um, and, and I guess I would leave you, I always try to leave folks with, with some actions or some insights, right? And so optimal operational efficiency and productivity, right? It, it requires some things, right? And, and really, I think of the rule of three, right? In order to obtain the peak operational efficiency and productivity, you have to have a commitment to three facets of your business, to technology, to help do it, operations, to build in the process and the flows and, and the commitment there, as well as to a culture, right? True operational efficiency and productivity gains cannot be realized unless the entire organization is bought in into the why. So I think start there um, and then focus your business on insights. Obviously, Scoro can provide these to you out of the box, but whether or not you're using Scoro, you truly can't be operational efficient and productivity in this line of work if you don't understand the quoted versus the actual work, you don't understand and have real-time transparency into staff and resource utilization, or what's happening in real time, work in progress, right? What are our projects? What are our guardrails? Where are we going off? Where are we in the red, the green? You need to have these insights in order to truly achieve operational and efficiency, operational efficiency and productivity um, peak rewards, right? Um, so I would say focus on these these two things um, and, and you'd lay a good good foundation uh, for achieving good results in 2023, even given the headwinds that we're about to come into. All right, great. Well, I think we've reached the end of our time. And so thank you everybody out there for attending Ad Ages Custom Webcast sponsored by Scoro. 
And reminder, you can also view and listen to this presentation on demand using the same link that you used to attend today. You'll receive an email as soon as the archive is ready. And on behalf of our guests, Samantha, Kevin, and Patrick, thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Thank you, John. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Sam. Bye, everybody.